for electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, my name is Joe Hobbs. I am the undergraduate program director. I currently teach classes uh, in computer science engineering. Uh, I also have taught some electrical engineering. Uh, Christy Hennon is also here. She's the associate director of student services. Uh, she's someone you will get to know very well uh, once you attend the University of Toledo. And we have several students online as well, and Chrissy will uh, introduce those when we get uh, later into the presentation. If at any time I cut out, I'm having some technology issues here, jump up and down or wave your hands or something and let me know that you're not hearing me or seeing my screen, uh, and we'll make an adjustment on the fly. Okay, so um, engineering, right? It's a rewarding career. I still remember way back when I was in high school, uh, you know, some people come in to recruit you uh, to different universities, and they handed out, uh, you know, information about the different majors. And right at the top at the time, uh, chemical engineering was number one and electrical engineering was number two as far as starting salaries. Uh, obviously, back when I was in high school, uh, science engineering was yet to be developed and come about, right? We were just on the cusp of uh, computing and internet, et cetera. And so starting salary is a, a very good reason that people get into engineering. And you can see here um, some of the information for uh, the starting salaries for students from various universities, mostly regional universities here in Ohio. And note also the debt, earn, debt to earnings ratio. This is an important aspect to consider when you're going off to college, trying to decide where you wanna go. Certainly you can get computer science engineering degrees or computer science degrees, I should say, computer science engineering would be a little tougher since there's only eight in the nation. But there's various places that you can go for electrical engineering and computer science or computer science engineering should you uh, look for one of the eight in the country. Uh, but an important thing to consider is how much is this education gonna cost me? What's my return on my investment? Uh, I'm going to go out into the industry and I'm gonna start making $68,000 a year and I'm gonna talk a little bit about co-op later on um, here in our presentation. We actually have a lot of students that graduate uh, with money in the bank because the uh, tuition is low. There's many scholarships. Our students are very well qualified for the scholarships. And then these co-op opportunities enable students to uh, save money in between semesters when they're on co-op versus taking courses. And you'll notice here that uh, this Chris Hogan guy, he surveyed over 10,000 millionaires, and the number one profession among these millionaires was engineers. And that's not surprising to him. It's really not surprising to me either. Uh, engineers are good at planning, and engineers are good at problem solving. Once you learn how to solve a problem uh, or approach solving problems, you can solve any problem, not just related to electrical engineering or computer science, but anything in life. Uh, you know, once you, once you get the process down, troubleshooting, thinking about how to fix things, uh, you become really an expert at planning and solving problems. So when we talk about the broad fields of engineering here with electrical engineering and computer science engineering, there's a lot of things you can get involved in. Uh, some of the main uh, hot topics nowadays with computer science engineering are artificial intelligence and cybersecurity and machine learning. So if those are areas that interest you, uh, computer science engineering could be a place that you want to major that you may want to go into. And our faculty in the last year has been very active writing uh, proposals and receiving grant money uh, from various uh, entities. And so there's a lot of money coming in to help fund research uh, at the university and there is undergraduate research available. I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, electrical engineering, again, lots of opportunities in electrical engineering from maybe you like uh, power grid type studies or power distribution. Uh, maybe you're into construction, you know, uh, anytime there's major buildings or major, major uh, changes within a city, you know, electrical engineers are needed uh, to help put together the power plan for those areas. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and there's also battery storage, right? There's an onslaught of uh, electrical solutions that people are looking to, to get rid of uh, gas powered engines. Okay, so we have, as you've heard, two majors within our department. We have both um, computer science and engineering and electrical engineering, and we are accredited by what is called ABET. Um, it's the Engineering Accredita Accreditation um, Commission, 
And what that, why that makes us, why that's important is that it says that we have an outside source that has told us um, that we're doing a good job. That these students, that when you graduate with a, a, um, a degree from our program, that you are um, prepared, you've met all the specific requirements that they require, and, um, and you're prepared to go out into the workforce. And so we have full accreditation for both um, majors for computer science um, and engineering, which is a unique degree all in of its own, um, whereas there's only one of eight in the country. So we have both um, EAC, which is en the engineering accreditation, and the CAC, which is the computing accreditation. Why would you want to come to the University of Toledo to get uh, your BSEE or your BSCSE? Well, one of the things that we like to say, in fact, it's on the wall downstairs in the engineering building, is that we recruit a graduating class, not a freshman class. So, obviously, we, we have to go through this recruiting process to get freshmen to come to the university, but we view that as just the first step. That's not even really our goal. You know, we, we got to have freshmen in order to get seniors to graduate, but what we really want to do is see you graduate. So, a lot of times at a lot of universities, they recruit you, they get you in, and then you're off and running on your own, trying to figure out what to do <clears throat> and how to navigate the program. I can tell you at Toledo, I've been here for about three years now, and our faculty and staff are very caring uh, folks. Um, we all work really hard <clears throat> to help you uh, reach your goals and graduate. And you get exposure to a lot of ideas. Uh, we have great facilities, very knowledgeable faculty, our faculty are performing cutting edge research. I, I mentioned earlier that uh, just in the last year, we have received a lot of grant money through proposals that our faculty has been uh, writing. Uh, wide range of career options. I mentioned some of those earlier. Uh, once you get a degree in engineering, of course, I prefer electrical or computer science engineering, you really can name your career. Uh, a lot of our students go on to do research and development. They get involved in production. Uh, consulting is a great way to really build your background, build your portfolio, especially when you're young. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, consulting is tough because you're on the road a lot, but you get to learn a bunch of different industries. And then once you're done with that, let's say you decide to consult for two or three years, once you're done with that part of your career, you can pretty much name where you want to go uh, with your degree. And of course, lots of our graduates go on to graduate school, either in engineering. Uh, we have people that go on to get their MBAs or also go off to medical school or law school. So all these skills that you get are really lifelong skills that are gonna enable you to um, go after whatever career you want to um, within the bounds of uh, your learning from the University of Toledo. So you're, the engineering degree doesn't limit you necessarily to engineering. I'd like to think that you know, once you go into engineering, electrical engineering, computer science engineering, those are the areas that you probably will focus on on your career, but should you decide to take a business route uh, or a medicine or law route, those are certainly open to you as well. One thing to point out here is that uh, we have an integrated co-op program. You have to do three rotations. And this is really, to me, a very attractive part uh, to students. I know some students, they look at it and think that well, they're adding on to their time in school. But really, you're getting almost a year's worth of experience out in industry. These are full-time jobs uh, with great pay. Uh, I believe electrical engineers right now are around $20 an hour, and CSEs are around $19 per hour. That's the average. So there are some that make less and some that make more. And so imagine you're on your summer rotation. You're not taking any classes, and you're making 20 bucks an hour. That's pretty good money. Um, I certainly wish that I would have made that kind of money when I was an undergraduate student. And that enables you then with your scholarships and our low tuition to really keep your debt down as you go through uh, the University of Toledo. Okay, we have a lot of things that you can get involved in at the University of Toledo. We have uh, an association for computing machinery. There's also um, an association for computing machinery. There's a woman's um, uh, branch as well. And what they do, uh, one of the biggest things I think that they're known for is uh, the hackathons that they do. Um, obviously, they have weekly meetings or, or monthly meetings. Or sometimes they have guest speakers come in. But one of the highlights, I think, for a lot of students involved in, in that particular <coughs> student organization is doing hackathons. And if you haven't done a hackathon, uh, 
you know, it's you go on a Friday and you get in a team and you decide what project you're going to do over the next uh, about 48 hours. And, you know, there's little sleep and lots of work. Uh, it's a really great opportunity for students uh, to learn a lot about uh, the computer science engineering major. There's always, uh, there's often corporations that are hosting those hackathons for the students to attend. One of my favorites is the car down here. This is actually housed, I believe, in the mechanical engineering department, but the mechanical engineers, they can't get that car to run without us. So um, there's a lot of embedded systems in that car. Uh, so we need electrical engineers and we need some programming uh, to make that car do the things that the mechanical engineers want it to do. So that's a great opportunity to actually do some uh, cross-functional engineering, which is great experience, because that's probably what you're gonna do at some point during your career. And then this picture over here, uh, there's opportunities for you to give back to the community once you receive this education um, and, and get some new ideas on problem solving. Uh, you can get involved with groups that go out into the community and apply uh, some of that knowledge that they gain through their curriculum and they apply it to the community to help the community to be a better place. Okay, so now uh, Christy is going to introduce, um, I think you could maybe introduce the four students and then that, you know, Yemeni, obviously you're gonna go first, but maybe Christy in there introduce to all of them and then we'll take it from there. Again, my sincere apologies for the cough episode there. I appreciate everyone's uh, patience with that. And thank you for Christy for taking over there for a minute. Oh, sure, absolutely. So um, I'm, and some of you who were on the meeting early, probably heard us chatting. It was fun to me for me to see these students again. Some I've seen more recently than others, but these are some of our recent graduates. So we have um, uh, Yamini Patel, um, Aaron Honhorst, Carlos Gallo, and Brandon Bauer. And um, what they're gonna do is they're just gonna share a little bit about their experience um, some in their, cause they're all recent graduates. So some about their co-op experiences, but also really what um, they're now doing in their full-time jobs and how these are all great. You're gonna, I think, really enjoy to hear what they are doing, um, but how like they saw their coursework kind of come to life in different ways, maybe. Um, I don't mean to put them on the spot with that, but I think that they will be able to jump right in. So uh, Yamini, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself and a little bit of like where you're working and all that, I know we see that, but. Yeah, definitely. So, hi, I'm Yamini Patel, and I was an electrical engineering student. I graduated recently, um, just this past December. Um, so, just new to the workforce, and currently working with Amazon. Um, so, I'll start with telling you a little about a little bit about my co-op experience first. Um, so, I did four co-op rotations: the three with uh, first ones with GE Appliances, and then the fourth with Amazon. Um, like I said, electrical engineering. So. Uh, I know Christy definitely knows about my journey with trying to find a co-op and the panic that kind of came with, with trying to do that. But as Dr. Hobbs kind of stated, the the opportunity to do three co-ops and the kind of the challenge it presents of trying to get a position um, at a company when you're so new in school is very interesting. I know the first few, um, first first co-op especially, I was thinking, who's going to hire me? Like, what do I really know? And like, you'll you'll surprise yourself with how much you're really able to apply um, from your schoolwork in that first co-op. So I started off with the GE Appliances um, and I worked with their dishwasher electronics team. Um, that position was particularly interesting because it was very technical. Um, I used a lot of design skills there. I learned a lot of things that I hadn't even touched on in school at that point. I hadn't even taken circuits um, by that time as well. So it was a lot of learning on the job about things that I would learn in school later on, which was a really unique opportunity um, that I enjoyed kind of applying myself in that way. And then also being able to go back to school and say, oh, I kind of do understand this, or I've seen this in the workforce, or I've been able to like kind of do something that involves um, electronics and design and how that applies in, into like real life products as well. So uh, that was my first internship. I'd say after that opportunity, I was like, I'm not sure how technically involved I want to be in the workforce. So my next opportunity with GE Appliances, I worked on their rapid prototyping team. Um, really interesting. It was a very fast paced environment. Again, very technically driven. Um, in terms of like troubleshooting and really understanding um, the different challenges you can face in designing something from scratch and something brand new opposed to something that kind of already exists. So once again, a lot of really great hands-on experience. I was able to take a lot of what I learned in the semester between my two co-ops and actually apply that in this position too. Um, after that, I moved on to the, I was in the same division, I guess, the prototyping team. Um, but I worked in consumer research and understanding what people would want to buy in terms of new products. So this was very much a, a 
project management based role for my third co-op. It was very different from my previous ones, less technical and more driven by the customer and understanding kind of what we, what kind of appliances we want to pursue making um, in the future. And also a lot of event planning and community outreach as well in that role. So three very different opportunities, I'd say, but things that really compounded to give me a really diverse background and, and kind of a lot of different areas of engineering. Like I touched on a little bit of technical, a little bit of that project management and planning. Um, and by that time I had a kind of a year's worth of background and experience in the workforce. And then uh, for my fourth co-op, I, I didn't anticipate to interview with anyone else. I actually anticipated to go back with GE Appliances, um, but I, I went to the career fair and Amazon happened to be there and I talked to them um, and the role that they had really matched everything I'd learned at GE Appliances and applied it to one singular role. So um, I co-opted with Amazon on the robotics deployment engineering team. So it's under their, um, their Amazon robotics branch and essentially works with the fulfillment centers. So the centers that um, all the packages are sorted at, uh, it's working with the robotics being placed into those um, centers. So I worked on that team as an intern. It was during 2020, so I didn't get to go anywhere really. It was, it was a little bit of a virtual role, but still learned a lot there um, and really enjoyed working with that team. And then was hired on full-time um, in December. So I got to the chance to join the robotics operational readiness team, which is similar to the team I was interning on. Um, and now in my present role, I work with the robotics team and essentially make sure that they have completed a number of check items before we go big and start deploying robotics in a number of sites. So um, this year I'm working on two packaging products, um, both kind of working to reduce packaging waste um, and also to help packaging um, go faster and be more robust and make sure that everyone gets all their, their Amazon Prime packages on time. So a lot of um, interesting things. It's interesting to see the things I work on directly come out to people and I can like go to someone's house and see their Amazon packages and say, I put that <laughs> in a building somewhere. I know which building it is because it's close by where you live. So um, it's it's been interesting to be able to integrate kind of all of those skills in one. Um, and I'd say in terms of the amount I use my degree in my day-to-day -day work, um, things like senior design project, things like working in teams and in groups and also in clubs and organizations outside of that really helped shape and drive um, what I do at work. I, I mainly do a lot of planning. I work a lot with operations teams uh, as well as the technical team. So kind of being able to speak both languages and really like get multiple groups on the same page and get them together, really sticking to a plan. Um, sometimes that stuff I feel like seems arbitrary, but when you're in school and in college, definitely like making a schedule, setting yourself to it, making sure other people can track to it is one of the most hard, like difficult things you can do to keep everyone on pace. So um, something worth diving into. I, I highly recommend you guys get involved in in school activities because they, they very well translate into an actual career as well. So um, yeah, uh, currently with Amazon, um, not changing teams anytime soon, but people love to ask if, if you're gonna hop around anywhere else within Amazon. But um, yeah, currently planning on, on sticking with it and continuing um, with the robotics operation already in this team. Awesome, thank you, Yamini. Um, now we're gonna move on to Carlos. Um, so Carlos, take it away. Yeah, for sure. Um, Carlos Gallo, you know, international student. I think I might be the youngest or like the most recent, I guess is the word, graduated, graduated alumni here. Uh, just graduated in May, uh, computer science, did a minor in economics, uh, the economics one just because I found a passion before I moved to UT and there was no purpose for it besides it being interesting. Uh, I currently work at Square. I'm a software engineer there, uh, specifically backend engineer where I work uh, within the subscriptions team. So now sellers, within the they utilize i guess square as a product they can offer their own subscription to their customers kind of like if a barber wants to make a subscription so that you can come every week instead of paying a complete haircut every week just to kind of you know make yourself look good uh, throughout now they can offer a subscription and offer uh, different pricing for it uh, most of my international student i'm originally from honduras uh, besides that i guess i'll talk a little bit of my co-ops i really utilize a lot of my co-op rotations uh, they require three. I ended up doing five. They're very flexible here on allowing part-time if you do it for a year. So I really use that, especially since I felt that I had a little more time depending on classes and how you strategize, obviously, your schedule throughout. And it allowed me to, I guess, move to different types of uh, jobs. So I started doing, for example, IT, which was just te uh, technical troubleshooting, nothing really that exciting moved to uh, more of like a developer position within uh, this company called OnPoint in Perrysburg. And that allowed me to then transition into information security, which was another of my interests within Quicken Loans. There I did it for six months full time. 
uh, mostly I did uh, compliance. So basically uh, making sure that a lot of the things being done within Quicken Loans are compliant to the rules that we set specifically within the security department. Uh, a lot of SOC type two audits, which is audit basically when we hire external auditors to come and audit Quicken Loans to make sure that all the banking information that people are doing remains safe. And so that's kind of what I did throughout that internship and a lot of uh, in the, that was a lot of like more businessy, I guess, but you start understanding that that's, that weights more throughout your uh, professional experience rather than technical and, but understanding and having the, uh, I guess, like linguistics to be able to speak to an engineer and then talk to your, uh, to the external auditor that weights a lot more than just understanding how the engineers work. Uh, then I transitioned to another company within Quicken Loans, which is called Nexus. Uh, there I did full stack web development. And then I, on my last year, transitioned to a part-time position with a small kind of startup company in Troy, Michigan called uh, Intrepid Control Systems, where I worked basically as a full stack engineer, uh, basically creating a web, uh, a web application that allowed their customers to customize one of our products, which was data loggers for car manufacturers. So for example, if they, when Tesla is making a single car throughout their manufacturing line, they put these data loggers and I created the web tool that allowed them to customize what they want the data logger to basically log throughout the uh, complete cycle of the car. And so, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's a little bit of uh, my experience. Thank you so much. Okay, Aaron, you're up. Hello, everybody. Um, conversely, I think I might be the oldest alumni <laughs> on here. Um, my name is Erin. I'm from Tip City, Ohio, originally, which if any of you are from the Dayton area, um, roughly that's about 15 minutes north of Dayton. Um, I majored in computer science and engineering, and I graduated with that degree in spring of 2018. My current um, full-time position is as a telecommunications engineer uh, with the Lubrizol Corporation. So. The Lubrizol Corporation is um, a Berkshire Hathaway company. If any of you know Warren Buffett, um, he owns our company. Um, it's a chemical company. Um, they do things with um, engine oils, driveline fluids, um, any type of like Nike product, Bath and Body Works, cosmetics, pretty much anything you touch has some sort of Lubrizol product in it. Um, and I work for their IT department. Um, that is who I co-op with. I did three co-op rotations. Um, the first one, was um, web design. So um, the company had just implemented Office 365. This was some time ago. This was five and a half years ago. So um, the, the company had just integrated um, Office 365. So I made some internal web pages that educated our users on the different Office 365 products. My second co-op rotation, um, I was more in business analytics, which was actually not something that I knew about prior to going into my field. Um, Going into computer science and engineering, you kind of tend to think that it's black and white. Um, you have computer science, so you have like your software engineering, your programming and developing. Um, when you have your computer engineering, which is infrastructure, working on servers, um, things like that. But it's actually like a whole spectrum. There's tons of stuff that you can do in between. And that's kind of what business analytics is. Um, I worked pretty much as a translator between our clients, which were um, they could be chemists, they could be people in HR, um, anyone else within the corporation. And I kind of translated what they wanted to our programmers that would in turn build like SharePoint workflows um, and different programs for them. Um, one, one in specific that I can think of was a one of our plants down in Texas, they needed a, a form built and a lot of our workers down there, um, English is a second language for them. So um, I worked with her to provide a form that could switch back and forth between a few different languages um, just by a click of a button for the user. Um, and then my last call rotation was with the telecommunications team. Um, that is a team I got hired onto full time. So that team for me is kind of like a best of both world situation. Um, I help from a, an analytics perspective, um, I manage and kind of audit um, a, a multi-million dollar contract we have with our global phone system. Um, I also take a look at like our existing software, make sure that we're using it appropriately um, and scaling down or scaling up on it, depending on how much of it we're using. Um, I also work on the infrastructure and like the communication side of it. So the more technical side, 
Um, we're implementing some servers right now called session border controllers that basically work as a firewall um, between our voice traffic and our network. Um, and that will allow us to support our Avaya side, which is our phone system. And I'm sure you're familiar with Microsoft Teams. Um, I'm currently imp implementing Microsoft Teams as a phone system with our company globally. So um, those are some things that I'm kind of up to now. Um, the Teams project is taking up a lot of my time. It's a lot of work, but it's it's really cool to see. It's very new. People are very excited about it. I'm very excited about it. Um, as for my classes and implementing them in my career, I kind of agree with Yamini here in that um, working with people and collaborating with people, group projects, senior design, um, your communication skills, the big one, critical thinking, my logic and how I thought my freshman year of college versus when I became full time was drastically different. So that was the biggest takeaway from me. You cover a wide variety of topics in your degree. Chances are you're not going to use all of them. It doesn't matter what degree you get. You're not going to use every single class you take. Um, but having that diverse background and having that knowledge and having those group projects really will give you the one up. Um, and the co-ops are so critical. Um, as they've mentioned, you know, it helps your debt ratio, helped me pay down some of my student loans. I bought a car with one of my um, co-op rotations um, because my first car was not reliable. <laughs> so I, it helped me save up and buy a reliable car. Um, and I really, I left college in a significant amount less debt, if that makes sense. I'm not an English major. Um, a significant amount of less debt than a lot of my peers, um, thanks to the co-op program, so. Great, thanks, Aaron. And now um, let's hear from Brandon. Hey, everyone. So my name is Brandon Bauer. I am a computer science and engineering major that graduated in December 2020. Um, and I also have a business administration minor. Um, so to speak to my co-op experience, I actually had four different co-ops with two different companies. Um, I'm currently with Union Home Mortgage, which was my first co-op and also my third and fourth co-op. And then I also worked with Quicken Loans as my second co-op. So for my first co-op, I worked at Union Home Mortgage as an IT intern. Um, basically, I was able to be like the first point of contact in a very fast paced help desk system that actually was not just to headquarters, it's for the entire, the entire company across the country. So we worked with about 35 different states and like a bunch of different time zones. And we were that first point of contact for any troubleshooting issues that happened with their technology. Um, we also, during that time, acquired two different mortgage lenders. So we were actually able to bring on about 400 new partners to the company. So we, as the interns, actually were responsible for a lot of that imaging, provisioning, and the onboarding process with the new partners of the company. So to an extent, we sort of were some of the first impressions for these new partners. And we actually were given the opportunity to travel to different locations, such as like Phoenix, Arizona, or even Toledo, Ohio. Um, where we're able to just meet all the different partners and be there to help them get through the day when they initially started up. But really, we're able to be, give out exceptional world-class customer support as a result of that. Um, so after that internship, I actually went over to Quicken Loans as an infrastructure stability intern. So while I was there, I was able to work on, we were actually patching a bunch of different servers at the time as a result of the Blue Keep security problem, which actually went all the way back to Windows XP. So Microsoft released a patch for that, and then all the different various OSs that were affected by that, which since XP was out of support at the time during summer 2019, like, you know, it was very intense. So as an intern, I actually led that process in order to basically help design and implement the automation of patches and updates and just security actions to the entire server infrastructure of Quicken Loans that were both in Windows and Linux environments. Um, I believe there were about 5,000 different servers that we actually had as company. Um, I also was able to work with our um, reporting team to create some dynamic Power BI dashboards, which we're just able to better see into those servers and see like what environment is this in, who owns the server, is it compliant with us right now? And I was able to also work with our disaster recovery specialists to facilitate with fa failovers and audits if we ever came to that point. Um, after that, I actually went back to Union Home Mortgage in 2020, that summer, which was a remote internship, which I was just glad to have that still, um, since that was when everything was just getting crazy in the world. But they were 
very willing to make be flexible and had the entire company be remote, including the interns and kept everybody on for that summer. Um, I returned back as a software development intern where we worked with a lot of C sharp technologies along with JavaScript and .NET core, basically to create various different applications using custom and third party APIs and web services um, and things like that. While I was interning there, I, they basically just threw me into production work. They said, in order for you to learn the best, we're going to just treat you like another full-time partner here. We're not just going to give you an intern project. We're going to throw you into what any other software developer here would do. So while I was there, um, I actually led the development process and did the development for a, our, a plugin for a third-party loan origination software that basically was able to validate and automatically apply changes regarding um, HMDA data, which HMDA is the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act. So basically what we had to do is be compliant and report the proper data of a loan to the government. So that, that data can't be wrong. It has to always be properly correct. So it was a very high priority project in order to make sure we were reporting everything properly. We were working both with compliance in our loan offer in our company, along with the innovation department in order to make sure we we're gonna ensure optimal success. Um, after that internship, I actually was offered a full-time role with them, which I'm currently doing now as a junior software developer. A lot of the same work I was doing then, I'm still doing now today, which carried through since they treat any other intern just like a full-time partner. Um, I also start to do a lot of mentorship now with our current interns and then also some of our other junior devs, which has been really cool to be able to like spread the word, the knowledge. Um, probably the biggest project that I've been working on lately is something that we call In The Money. Basically what it does is it goes through our entire portfolio of loans and tries to see if that customer can actually refinance with us and save over $75 a month. So what that is effectively is just a big batch job that's automating through all of our loans, calling out to a third party um, loan pricing service and seeing if there's any products available with their current um, exact pricing for their loans. So like if they have a 15 year loan, they're able to get refinance with another 15 year loan. Um, and ideally, if they're able to save money, it notifies our loan officers, both via email and through a website that I helped develop. And we're able just to see, basically just to try and make money through that and keep our customers loyal to UHM if we're able to do that. But yeah, to, to echo a lot of what everybody has said, all the work here does prep you for what you're gonna do, but at the same time, you're gonna be exposed to brand new technologies that really just tie everything together like doing the software development internship and my current role, I still am like tying together various classes. A lot of the software development classes, such as the software development or object oriented programming, a lot of those tied together what I currently do today and then being exposed to other process, other sides of the IT world, like at the help desk or with um, infrastructure stability, I was able to really like come up and see how everything relates to one another and how all, they're all interconnected in with the world of technology. Thanks, Brandon. I am always so impressed whenever I hear what our graduates are doing. Um, I myself have a, a master's in higher education, so I'm here. That's what my goal was, is to help and support these students. But when I hear what they've done, I just get so blown away. And one thing I um, noticed in what Brandon was saying is that on, I think it, you said it was your last co-op that you got, I don't want to say thrown into the deep end, but you were you know, said, okay, here you go. This is what you know, you're going to get in there. But I want to assure those um, students who have, or, you know, getting there, just thinking about this whole process, you're not expected to know how to do that. Your first co-op, they, you know, these companies, um, whether they're big companies or small companies or mom and pop companies, whatever they are, you're going to have somebody that's there to help support you. They're not expecting you to know everything you should know by the time you graduate on your first co-op. I think these students could all agree that their first co-op, they learned a lot more than they knew before going in um, about how to do different things. Um, so um, we're going to open it up to questions, but I do want to um, go ahead and pass it off. We have someone here from the admissions office to just share a little bit more about um, the next step in the process. Um, I apologize that I cannot remember their name. So, um, uh, Ryan, are they here? I'm actually going to be oh, okay. um, giving. Well, I, yeah. okay. So, Ryan Martindale, she um, works with us in the College of Engineering, but she's going to share a little bit, and I'll let you go ahead and take it away. And, Joe, I believe the slides are... Yeah, there should still be at the end. 
yes, he just stopped sharing. So awesome. So thanks, Joe. So um, like Christy said, so my name is Ryan Martindale. I work in the College of Engineering, but I previously worked in our um, undergraduate admission office here at the University of Toledo. So if you know all of this sounds interesting and you're kind of looking to, you know, what's next and um, how do you apply to UT? There's two different options. So we have our test optional admission requirements, and then we also have um, test score admission requirements specifically for the College of Engineering. These are our general admission requirements here. We, um, for the College of Engineering, if you're interested in CSE or electrical engineering, it is a um, 3.5 uh, GPA and then a B or higher in trig or pre-calc. If you do apply with your test scores, we are super scoring those. So that is a 3.0 GPA, 22 on the math, 22 overall, 550 on the SAT or 1110 overall on the SAT, depending on you know which test that you take with at least four years of math and one year of chemistry. Applying test optionally is the easiest because we do have um, just your transcripts is really all that we need and we can process that um, a little bit quicker. It does take the admissions office about two to three weeks and we are rolling admissions. So what that means is if you apply today, you would then be um, you know, admitted as long as we have all your documents in about two to three um, weeks after that. And then merit aid, so we do have merit scholarships. So I know the students kind of talked about here, um, and I think Erin mentioned it about she was able to buy a car while she, you know, for money from co-op. So the merit aid that our students also receive is really helpful in providing a little bit of that additional support. So you're using that co-op to, you know, buy necessities like your transportation or offsetting that future um, that future costs of that next semester. So we have our merit scholarships, our Rocket Nation scholarship is available for any of those students that are out of state. We also have our presidential scholarship, which is a separate application. The merit in Rocket Nation are automatic based on your transcripts. The presidential is students that have at least a 3.8 GPA. And then I believe it is a 30 on the ACT or the equivalent SAT. That is, um, a full ride, so four of the students that apply for that receive full tuition, room and board, and a $3,000 research stipend. And then the other eight students that are there that interview that day do receive full tuition, so it's a great scholarship. And usually we have at least like one engineer every other year, um, if not one every year that does win that award because we do have a lot of high achieving students that come into um, the College of Engineering. We also have Levis Leadership, which is a scholarship and an organization as well. So if you're someone in high school that really likes to get involved, really likes to do, you know, things for the community, helping other students, Levis Leadership is a great organization to join for that. And that is um, a $1,000 scholarship associated with that. We also have our financial aid um, scholarships, which it's one application that will apply you to about 100 different scholarships. And then colleges here in the, um, and departments here in engineering, we do offer our own scholarship specific. So some of our donors and alumni, they're really generous and provide some additional scholarship opportunities for our students. And in regards to other scholarship opportunities that we have, we um, occasionally host a Rocket Scholars Day during the spring semester. So if you are a senior right now, I would be just checking your email um, in the next couple of months just to see um, about our Rocket Scholarship, if you know, Rocket uh, Scholars Day, if that's going to be um, an event that admissions plans on hosting this year, which we do award scholarships then as well. And they're about a scholarship. Oh, um, I see it. Thank you. Go there. Yep. Yeah. Um, I am not seeing that that question. It, it's asking if the presidential scholarship is available to international transfer students. So great question. The presidential scholarship is available only for domestic incoming freshman students. There are additional scholarship opportunities for our transfer students, though. Yeah, if I can kind of piggyback on that, yeah. uh, I'm an international transfer student, so I did 
qualify for not that scholarship, but they also offer the international scholarship, which I forget the name, but I would also look into that as well. It basically brings down from out of state tuition to in state, if I recall. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Carlos. Um, another question that um, I just saw was Does Toledo offer a computer science and engineering technology major? which is also another program that we offer. So that is housed in our engineering technology department. It's similar to our computer science and engineering um, in terms of degree offerings. We do see those kind of overlap a little bit more in terms of what students you know, do when they graduate and out on co-op, but we do offer both of those programs here at UT. I am not seeing the chat, so if somebody else is getting those questions, feel free. I just see the one right now. Okay. Well, while we're waiting to see if there's any more questions, I wanted to comment on the Levis Leadership Program. My son is actually in, in that uh, organization. Uh, he's a junior now, um, and it opened a lot of opportunities for him on campus, I think, as part of the uh, as part of that organization, the Levis Leadership Program, you have to join uh, so many other organizations on campus in order to, uh, you know, maintain the scholarship. And then also, as you go up through the through your academic career, you become a mentor for the incoming freshmen. So uh, it's really a great opportunity to get around other students that are leaders, but more importantly, they're in different majors. So a lot of the organizations that I talked about today are specific to uh, engineering, computer science engineering, and electrical engineering. If you get involved with something like Levis, um, you have an opportunity to uh, mingle with students from all kinds of majors across the university, as well as multiple organizations across the university. So I can't say enough uh, positive things about the Levis Leadership Program. It's been really good uh, for my son uh, as he's journeying through his academic career there at the University of Toledo. I will tell you, however, important to tell you, he's not an engineer. Uh, he's in law and social thought. So he's he's a little different than his dad, but he's a great student and doing great things at Toledo. Thanks, Joe. Um, we got a, a couple questions here. So um, I'm going to share, someone had asked about how you apply for the presidential scholarship. So I will share the link in the chat so you can access that. And then this is geared towards the um, recent alum. So with the engineering field being so large and diverse, how far into your studies were you when you decided to narrow on your field? Um, and then kind of another one, what got you interested in that? So those two questions kind of, you know, as a prompt for you guys. Um, I can start with this one. So um, full transparency, starting in computer science and engineering, that was a shot in the dark for me. Um, my brother is a chemical engineer, and uh, we have very similar kind of thought processes, took very similar classes in high school, and he kind of pushed me towards engineering. So I didn't know if I was going to like it. Um, actually, a little while into it, I didn't think that I did like it. Um, I was looking at switching my major, um, but the co-ops kind of changed my mind. I kind of realized that, you know, a couple of I wasn't necessarily crazy about some of the classes that I took, but I loved the hands-on experience and what I did at my co-op. And I thought, if I can power through these classes, then I can, you know, go into the into the real world with the job that I like. Um, so that's what got me interested. That was kind of my my shot in the dark, and I got lucky. Um, what was the other question, Ryan? What? Um... Oh, when did we decide to like specialize? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, sorry, it just came to me. <laughs> so um, my co-ops and every company is different, um, but most companies that, at least my peers that have co-op that, they require you to do different teams every time. Um, so my first one was more computer science oriented where I did web design. Um, my second one was more business oriented and my last one was more computer engineering oriented. Um, so my co-ops really helped me decide what I liked and didn't like. Um, ironically, with a computer science and engineering degree, I hate programming. Um, so I, <laughs> I found that out my first rotation, um, which is it's part of the learning experience, right? Um, but I love the more business and the computer engineering side. So 
the last call rotation for me was kind of like a best of both worlds situation. I discovered the world of like computer analytics and kind of the infrastructure side of things. Um, so my co-ops are kind of what helped me decide to specialize. Um, I'm still very into the business side of things. I love business analytics, product and project management um, and all of that I got exposed to in my co-ops and I wouldn't have known about it otherwise without them. I don't know if anyone else wants to speak on that. I can speak a little bit on that. Uh, I guess like regarding uh, how did I decide CSC was mostly on a hunch, I like computers and I'm like, you know, let I read one quote once that said, I forget what it is, I'm gonna butcher it. But basically says that even if you have the best computer there is, if you don't have good software, it doesn't really matter. And so that kind of caught me thinking if like, maybe I was thinking either computer engineering or CSE and uh, like computer science specifically, obviously, UT gave me the opportunity to do kind of like a little bit of both and understand both and gives you a wider range of uh, prospects after you graduate or when you're interning to like uh, mention that you've taken a couple classes regarding if you want to move. Uh, so I kind of took it on the way to, to, to do CSE in that aspect and then specializing like, for example, I guess I, I would say I specialize now on backend engineering, which is basically creating systems on where, how, when you click a button, what's happened, what happened in the back that you don't see, I guess. It's the best way, I guess, to kind of mention what backend is and the way that you kind of specialize in that it helps a lot is through co-ops. You want to start understanding what things you don't like and understanding what things you don't like come, comes a long way after graduation because you know what things you like from this employer or from this manager, or what things you like uh, working at. You want to start understanding like what's good communication, what, you know, and start developing those skills early on. And when you graduate with, because I did mostly like full stack and like front end engineering, I, I decided that my curiosity lied, for example, in backend. And so obviously as a new grad, you don't really get to pick and choose. And thankfully Square gave me the option where they were build, building the entire new subscription-based system. And that's why I, I ended up deciding on them instead of, of other positions that were mostly full stack, which is what you'll see uh, when you graduate, uh, when you're looking for software engineering positions. Uh, so I guess that's kind of like how I decided to specialize was well, because of the cooperations and how they gave me the opportunities to do things which uh, are important, but I ended up, it, it ended up pushing you to a pathway where you start understanding what your curiosity lands and it kind of leads you to where you want to go. I can echo a lot of what Carlos just said as well. I think when you think about computer science and engineering, it's like you have to have both software and hardware in harmony in order to have a good product. I think Apple is a really good example of this. They're literally still supporting the iPhone 6S, which came out in like 2014, you know? So it's like, that's a result of good software and good hardware together. So when Toledo had this program, it was cool to get exposed to both software and hardware in your classwork. And that alone helped me figure out, okay, I'm leaning more towards the software. I like programming. I like building things like that. And so once I had the opportunity to do that in a professional light, in a, in a job, um, I was really able to see, okay, I really like software development a lot. And then from there, I've been able to be exposed both to the front end technologies and the back end technologies of programming, which has helped me decide like, hey, I like both. I want to be a full stack developer. So really just being able to be exposed to all of that here helped me like figure out that I had a passion for it. And just in general, I've loved technology literally since I was a kid. Like I can remember playing on our Windows 98 desktop and just like figuring out how to use the UI and just, I was so young when all that happened and I just like was a seed and then eventually just came to be, you know. Awesome, yeah. thank you. Oh, go ahead, Andy. We have a couple <laughs> questions, another couple questions. So you can go ahead and then we'll, we'll answer those as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll make it fast. Sorry, I had a quick connection issue there. But yeah, similar to kind of what Aaron was saying, I, I definitely took a shot in the dark. I had no clue what I wanted to do in the slightest. Like, if I had told my younger self that I'd be working at Amazon in a couple of years, I, would, I wouldn't have believed it. Like, I, there's no way I would have thought that would happen. But um, I would say I, I was local to Toledo area. Um, I knew University of Toledo had a good engineering program. And I was like, you know what, let me, let me just give it a shot. Um, I, I stayed close to home. I commuted all four years of school. Um, so I, I was just like, let me try it out and see what I, I like and don't like. And I actually started out in computer science engineering. Um, and then after three semesters, switched over to electrical engineering because it, it kind of fit me more. I like the physical aspect of being able to see more of it opposed to like 
theoretical code and a lot of that. And I'm also kind of dyslexic. So it, was, it was definitely a shift that needed to happen. So um, I, I enjoyed it after a while. I started getting used to it more and, and I kind of enjoyed being able to, to engage with uh, like, I don't know, engage with engineering in that way. Um, and and again, like like a lot of the other people said too, like the co-ops are very like, learning a lot of what I didn't like before I got anywhere near what I did like. So it was a lot of, it, it felt like failures, but it was really a learning experience through the entire way of, of knowing like what what fits you and, and learning something that you don't like is just as valuable as learning what you do like. So um, none of it's time wasted. It definitely all helps and, and stacks up on itself. And um, and commuting the whole time also definitely helped me save. I know with making money on co-ops too, like I, I came out pretty pretty dead even in terms of like save, saving and, and spending. So I didn't have to take out any loans or anything because I commuted too. Um, and with scholarships, I, I kind of um, made up for everything. So I was in a good place and I feel really good having graduated a year from now and being like really, really financially stable at such a young age and not having to worry kind of about the debt situation too. So um, engineering just it sets you up for a good success. And then if you're a local too, like definitely explore commuting. I, I mean, Toledo is a huge commuting school and like I spent all my days on campus, but it was nice to just drive home and not have to worry about food or, or like living anywhere and it was, it was nice not to have to think about that awesome thank you um so the next question that we have and, and christy i'll answer it and then if you want to jump on in and answer any um or add anything so are the co-ops during the summer or during the school year and would you still get a degree in four years so our co-op program with um any of our engineering science programs, so the two that you're specifically learning about today, the, your co-op could be in any semester. So the fall, the spring, or the summer. The benefit of potentially being able to have a co-op in the fall or the spring is there's a lot less competition when it comes to other students from other universities because not every school like us offers a full you know, schedule of classes over the summer. So that makes UT a really great um, great option for that and the program is still technically eight semesters of coursework but the students graduate in four and a half years so you would graduate the december of the year that you would traditionally graduate from college so any um anyone want to add anything or yeah i'll just jump in on that um and being the way that the co-op rotations are traditionally set up yes we have them fall spring and summer but really the idea is you're going to get a chance to do one in the fall, one in the spring, and one in the summer because you start with classes for the first three semesters, and then um, in your second year you would either go on co-op in that spring or the following summer, and then you start rotating, and then the next group goes out and you come back and take classes. So yeah, it's 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 set up in a way that hopefully we can work with the classes that you need and that they're there and that we get you out on co-op. But there's always some uh, some special circumstances. Here, if I can, uh, this is this is a topic that comes up uh, in my introduction class that I teach uh, every fall. And you know, the four the four year, four and a half year, five year, you know, students are very interested in how long is it going to take me to graduate. And you know, in all my years of experience uh, out in industry and now uh, teaching here at the University of Toledo. I think rather than focusing on how fast can I get it done, uh, it's more about focusing on what am I going to, how am I going to set myself up to be as successful as possible, not only in the time that I spend at the University of Toledo, but also moving off into industry. There's a lot of things to consider. You got to be mentally healthy. You have to be, uh, uh, not everybody can take 18 hours of classes and that's okay. Uh, so if it takes you a little bit longer, uh, that's okay. We. You know, we have to frame it as a four and a half year program because that's what students like to hear. Um, and if you're able to do it, which most of our students are, that's fantastic. Uh, the thing to look at is you're graduating with a four year degree from an accredited university and a year of experience. So even if it takes you that fifth year, you're, you are so far ahead of anybody graduating from a non-integrated co-op program. I can't, even, I can't even describe it to you. I, all these students you heard from uh, now I haven't I haven't had all of them. I've had, I think I know Carlos, but I'm in my third year here, and just seeing the transition from the freshman now up into their junior year, the maturity, the ability to present in front of people, the technical writing skills that uh, get advanced as you go through the curriculum. Um, just just focus on a plan that works for you, and if it takes uh, five years, five and a half years, 
I know it sounds like a long time, but I'm going to be 50 in November. And once that fifth year is gone, it's, it's not going to make any difference to you when you're going to be 50. So uh, Chrissy will work to tailor a plan that works for you. And as Thanks, Dr. Hobson, any other questions? Sorry, what was that, Erin? As Dr. Hobbs said, at the end of the day, you're adding on what's really a semester, right? But you're getting pretty much a full year of experience and, and work, and that's going to be that's a huge. huge advantage compared to other universities that don't offer that experience. Yeah. Um, we have actually reached or gone past our hour. Ryan, do we have any other questions? I don't see them. Nope. So. No, no questions on, on our end. Um, I just want to say thank you all for, for joining us and I'm sure everyone else can echo that as well. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you to our alumni. Nice to see your faces. So that's awesome. But, um, and thank you for your time. Thank you guys. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody and anybody um, considering the University of Toledo. We certainly hope to see you in the spring.